Hello and welcome to Algebra 1 Lesson 15. In this video we're going to learn about graphing linear equations in two variables. So in the previous two lessons we developed the skills that we needed to be able to graph a linear equation in two variables. But one of the questions that might be on your mind, why would we want to graph a linear equation in two variables? Well, recall that linear equations in two variables have an infinite number of solutions. So a graph gives us a visual representation of all solutions of the equation. Now because we're graphing a linear equation in two variables, the graph is going to be a line. That's why they're called linear equations. Now each and every point on that line represents an ordered pair, an x and a y that is a solution for that equation. Meaning I can take the x, plug it in for x in the equation, take the y, plug it in for y in the equation, and the left and the right side will be equal. All right, so let's get started on this topic, and it's not very difficult. Unfortunately, the way that it's taught, in this kind of section here, you get a slow, tedious method to kind of execute this process. A few lessons from now, when we start talking about slope, when we start talking about solving for y and all these other things, you're going to get a much faster way to graph a linear equation in two variables. In fact, if you solve the equation for y, it's very, very, very quick. But for right now, we're going to kind of start out slow, and I'm going to teach you this method that uses a table of values. So we have our equation 2x minus 3y equals negative 12. And I have a table right here with x and with y. So in a previous lesson, I gave you an x value and you solved for y. Or I gave you a y value and you solved for x. Here you can come up with whatever x and solve for y or come up with whatever y and solve for x that you want. Keep in mind that you have to plot these on a coordinate plane. So you want to keep them nice and small and you want to work with integers if possible because your scale on the coordinate plane is generally going to be in integers. So let's go ahead and start out by picking a value for x. So you can choose numbers at random, but you're going to see later on that it usually works best to work with the number 0. So let's plug in a 0 for x, and I would have 2 times 0 minus 3y equals negative 12. So if x is 0, what's y going to be? Well, this is going to go away. 2 times 0 is 0. And I'll have negative 3y equals negative 12. Divide both sides of the equation by negative 3. And I'll get y is equal to 4. So if x is 0, y is 4. So that's one ordered pair that we would have. Now, how many do we need? Well, you're going to find out in your textbook or from somebody that two ordered pairs, or two points as we call them, make a line. But when you're doing this, you want to always use three because the third point is going to check to make sure that you have a line. So in other words, if I get a point here and let's say here, yeah, I can draw a line connecting those points. But let's say a third point would have been down here. Well, that's not a line. I must have made a mistake. If I'm trying to draw a graph there, it'd be something like this, right? I mean, that's that's not a line. So if you get a third point that's not in line, meaning it doesn't look like this, let's say this point was right here, then you know you're okay. So that's why that third point is used as a check. So now I'm going to get two additional points. Again, keep in mind you want to choose some nice small integer values. So I'm going to choose something for x. Let's say I choose the number 1. So 2 times 1 minus 3y equals negative 12. 2 times 1 is 2, so I would get 2 minus 3y equals negative 12. Subtract 2 away from each side of the equation. I'd have negative 3y is equal to negative 14. Divide both sides of the equation by negative 3. And I'm going to get that y is equal to 14 thirds. Now if I'm using a computer or something, I can plot the point 1 comma 14 thirds. But if I'm doing this on paper, do I really want to work with something like that? No. So if I get a non-integer value, I just kind of move on and try something else. I don't want to work with that because it's too hard to plot it on the coordinate plane. So let's think about something for a second before we move on. We have 2x minus 3y equals negative 12. If I think about this right here, whatever I plug in for x, I'm going to multiply it by 2. Then I'm going to subtract away, 
or add, depending on whether it's positive or negative, to both sides of the equation. So that's going to end up being over here. Whatever value that is over here, it's got to be divisible by negative 3. Otherwise, it's not going to be an integer. So keep that in mind. So one thing I can do is I can say, okay, if I plugged in a 3 here, I know that 2 times 3 is 6. So 2 times 3 is 6. And if I subtract 6 away from each side of the equation, that's gone. I'll have negative 3y is equal to negative 18. Well, negative 18 is divisible by negative 3. So if x is 3, remember I plugged in a 3 for x, y would be, divide both sides by negative 3, and I would get y equals positive 6. So there's an ordered pair, 3 comma 6. And I could also do this with negative 3. So 2 times negative 3 minus 3y equals negative 12. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 minus 3y equals negative 12. I would add 6 to both sides of the equation. That's gone. I'd have negative 3y is equal to negative 12 plus 6 is negative 6. Divide both sides by negative 3. And you're going to get that y is equal to negative 6 over negative 3 is 2. So if x is negative 3, y is 2. All right, so now once I've done that kind of scratch paper work, I'm ready to move on and actually graph my equation. So how do I do that? Well, I said that I needed three ordered pairs, really two make a line, but the third is for the check. And so I take my ordered pairs down to the coordinate plane and I plot them, just like I did in the last lesson, only now I'm gonna draw a straight line through them when I'm done. Let's take this down to the coordinate plane. All right, so we have the ordered pair zero comma four. So let's plot that. So zero comma four is right here. Then we have the ordered pair three comma six. So I wanna go three units to the right and six units up. So that's gonna be right here. Then I have the ordered pair negative three comma two. So I'm gonna go three units to the left and two units up. And you can eyeball that and see that you could draw a straight line through that. If one of your points was somewhere way over here, you have a problem. You need to go back and look at it and check your math. You did something wrong. Okay, so now all I wanna do is draw a line through the points. Now, in most cases, you're not gonna be able to draw a perfect line. You got a ruler at best, and you got a piece of graph paper, hopefully. But some of us are gonna be using just a piece of loose leaf and no ruler. So just do the best you can. Make it obvious to the teacher that you know you, you gave an effort to draw a straight line through the points. And in most cases, they're gonna be nice and give you credit. But unless you're using a computer, it's almost impossible to draw a completely perfect line. So then one of the things you can do when you're done, you can label it. So this is the graph of the equation, 2x minus 3y is equal to negative 12. And notice that each and every point on that line, again, is an ordered pair that is a solution to the equation. So for example, it looks like this point right here is on the line. Hopefully I drew it straight enough to where it is. So that would be the point six comma eight. So six comma eight. Let's see if that works as a solution. So let's test an X value of six, a Y value of eight. Let's see if that works. So two times six minus three times eight should be equal to negative 12. Two times six is 12 minus three times eight, that's 24 equals negative 12. You can see that works out. 12 minus 24 is negative 12. So you get negative 12 equals negative 12. So yeah, that's the solution to the equation. So that's the general idea behind graphing a linear equation in two variables. Each and every point on that line is an ordered pair that is a solution to that equation. So it's a visual representation of all your solutions. Now, one of the things that I didn't explain, but I should have went into depth on, is that I drew arrows at each end. These arrows are the same as the arrows I'm drawing right here, 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 and then down here. What is that telling us when we have an arrow? It tells us that it continues forever and ever and ever in that direction. So this line will continue forever, forever and ever and ever going in this direction and forever and ever and ever going in this direction. So that's why we put arrows at each end. All right, now let's talk about a few things real quick that are very, very important. I encourage you to take notes for this section. So the x-intercept, you're going to hear about this a lot. The x-intercept is the location on the coordinate plane where our graph 
crosses the x-axis. So let's go back up here and let's look at the x-axis. So I have a lot of stuff highlighted right now. Let me unhighlight some stuff. And I'm just going to highlight the x-axis. So here's the x-axis. And I want you to look at the graph. And I want you to see that the line crosses through right here. This is where it crosses the x-axis. So this is known as the x-intercept. It's a point where it intercepts the x-axis. And if you look at the graph, it looks like it's going to be at negative 6, 0. So negative 6, 0. This is the x-intercept. And you can tell that does work out. I'd have 2 times negative 6. That's negative 12. And this negative 3y would go away because I plug in a 0 for y. Negative 3 times 0 is just 0, so that's gone. So you get negative 12 equals negative 12. Now, I might want to bring your attention to the fact that the y location is 0. Why do you think that is? Well, if I'm on the x-axis, if I'm crossing through there, that means that vertically I have to be at 0 on the y-axis because that's where the x-axis lies, right? This is 0 on the y-axis. So to cross the x-axis, I have to be at 0 on the y-axis. Now, similarly, we have this thing called the y-intercept. This is the location on the coordinate plane where our graph crosses the y-axis. So let me unhighlight all this stuff. So the y-axis is here. This is the y-axis. So where does the graph cross there? Well, it crosses right here. At 0 for the x location and 4 for the y location. So this is your y-intercept. Okay, And this occurs at 0, 4. This is the y-intercept. And does that work out? Well, yeah, if I plug in a 0 for x, this would go away. I'd have negative 3 times 4. That is negative 12. So I'd get negative 12 equals negative 12. Now, one thing, again, I want to call your attention to is notice how your x-coordinate is 0. Because if I look at this horizontal axis, the x-axis, it has to be 0 for me to impact the y-axis. So this leads us to another method. And this is called the intercept method. You'll probably hear about this in your class. So the intercept method is usually much faster than choosing random numbers to plug into the equation. So we begin by finding the x and y intercepts. And then we also like one additional point for a check. So how do we find the x-intercept? Well, again, I told you, if you want to cross the x-axis, y has to be 0. Right? If I look at the coordinate plane, y has to be 0 to cross the x-axis. So for the x-intercept, y is 0. For the y-intercept, x is 0. So that's how you find your two intercepts. Again, if I want the x-intercept, the opposite one, y, is 0. If I want the y-intercept, the opposite one, x, is 0. So this would be the x-intercept. And this would be the y-intercept. And then we'll get a third point as a check. So let's go ahead and plug in a 0 for y. You'd have 2x plus 5 times 0 is just 0, so I can just have 2x. This equals negative 20. Divide both sides by 2, and you get x equals negative 10. So if y is 0, x is negative 10. And look how easy that was. When you work with 0, you plug it in, it makes things disappear. It makes your work a lot simpler. That's why this intercept method is usually a little faster. All right, now the other one, we're going to plug a 0 in for x. So this is the y-intercept. So 2 times 0 plus 5y equals negative 20. And again, I can just get rid of this. So 5y equals negative 20. Divide both sides by 5. You get y equals negative 4. So now I've got two ordered pairs. But again, I like a third one for a check. So what am I going to plug in for x? Well, if I look at this equation, 2x plus 5y equals negative 20. Again, if I think about this, whatever I plug in for x, I'm going to end up moving this over here. Right now, negative 20 is divisible by 5. So if i got to pick something that I plug in here and move it over here to where it's still going to be divisible by 5, otherwise I'm not going to end up with an integer. So one thing you can think about is, if I multiply 2 times 5, 2 times 5, that would give me 10. Now, if I subtract 10 away from negative 20, 
I'm going to get negative 30, and that's divisible by 5. So that would work out. So again, you want to kind of think about that before you start plugging in random numbers because if you end up with a non-integer, you just wasted your time, right? It's very hard to plot that. So you plug in a 5 here. You would have 2 times 5, or 10, plus 5y equals negative 20. I would subtract 10 away from each side of the equation. That's gone. I'll have 5y is equal to negative 30. Divide both sides by 5. I'm going to get that y is equal to negative 6. All right, so I have three ordered pairs. I have negative 10 comma 0. I have 0 comma negative 4. And I have 5 comma negative 6. So let's plot these points on the coordinate plane. And then we'll draw a straight line through them. All right, so let's begin with negative 10 comma 0. So that's all the way to the left on the x-axis. So way over here. This is negative 10 comma 0. Then I have 0 comma negative 4. So that's down 4 on the y-axis. And then I have 5 comma negative 6. So I go to the right 5 and down 6. And you can see that when I draw a straight line through it, the line's going to cross through here, which the x location is 0. So it's crossing through the y-axis. This is the y-intercept. Right? x location is 0 at that point. And then notice how it's also going to impact the x-axis here, where y is going to be 0. Okay, y is going to be 0. That's your x-intercept. All right, so let's draw a straight line through these points now. Okay, so put arrows at each end. And the line's not perfect, but it'll do for what we're trying to accomplish here. And again, look at where this line crosses the y-axis. And call your attention to that. Right here at the point 0, comma, negative 4. So the x location is 0. And notice how on your horizontal axis, you're in the center at 0. So that's your y-intercept. This is the y-intercept. And again, x is 0 at that spot. Then when we look at our x-intercept, again, that's the spot where our line crosses the x-axis. That's going to be right here. That's at negative 10, comma, 0. Notice how your vertical location, your location on the y-axis, is 0 there. And let me just label this real quick as the x-intercept. And let me just label this line as the graph for 2x plus 5y equals negative 20. And again, long story short, the main thing I want you to understand here is that for your x-intercept, y needs to be 0. So just plug in a 0 for y, solve for x, that's your x-intercept. For the y-intercept, x needs to be 0. So plug in a 0 for x, solve for y, that's how you get your y-intercept. So most of the examples you're going to see, especially at first, are going to be like the previous two. But occasionally, you're going to have to do a little bit more work because you're going to get a line that passes through the origin. You can tell right away if your equation looks like this. ax plus by equals 0. So some number times x plus some number times y equals 0. So we have an example here. 4x minus 3y equals 0. So the reason it's additional work is because if you try to use your intercept method here, the x and the y intercept occur at the same point, which is 0 comma 0. Right? The line passes through that because that's the origin. If I plugged in a 0 for x, you can think about this term just going away. You'd have negative 3y equals 0. Well, the only way negative 3y can equal 0 is if y is 0. So 0 comma 0 is a point on that line. But now I can also see, OK, if y is 0, x is 0. But if x is 0, y is also 0. So that's, that's the only intercepts I'm going to get. So now I have to pick two other points. And I have 4x minus 3y equals 0. So to make this a little easy on myself, I'm just going to add 3y to both sides of the equation. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to make it a little easier to see when I choose something for x or choose something for y, the result of that, is that going to be divisible by something to where I get an integer? Right? So in other words, if I plug in, let's say, a 3 here. I know that I'm going to get 12, and I know 12 is divisible by 3, so that will give me an integer. So I can plug in a 3 here, and so this would be 12. 12 equals 3y, divide both sides by 3, and I get 4 is equal to y. Now, to make this really easy, 
Again, I had 4x was equal to 3y. I could just use negative 3 because I know that's going to work out also. So what about negative 3 being plugged in for x? I'd have negative 12 equals 3y. Divide both sides by 3, and I'll get negative 4 equals y. All right, so I have my three ordered pairs. I have 0, comma 0. I have 3, comma 4. And I have negative 3, comma negative 4. Okay, so let's plot these points. So 0, comma 0, that's at the origin. That's going to be right here. 3, comma 4. So go to the right 3, go up 4. That's right here. Negative 3, comma negative 4. So go to the left 3 and down 4. That's going to be right here. We're going to put your arrows at each end. And I'm going to go ahead and label this. Again, this is the equation. 4x minus 3y equals 0. And you can see the only place that this line crosses through the y-axis is at 0, comma 0. And the only place this line crosses through the x-axis is, again, at 0, comma 0. So this is a line through the origin where both the x and the y-intercept occur at that origin, 0, comma 0. All right, so we've kind of talked about the basic scenarios that you're going to come across. And at this point, you should be confident enough to be able to graph most of the linear equations in two variables that you're going to encounter. It's just something you need to practice at this point. But I want to wrap up our lesson by talking about two special case scenarios. And if you see these, you're going to kind of be confused about what to do. So the first one is a vertical line, and the second one is a horizontal line. So a vertical line is one that has a fixed value for x, no matter what the value is for y. So this type of line is parallel to the y-axis. So we have x equals negative 3. So what we're saying here is that no matter what the value is for y, x is equal to negative 3. So if you want, you can choose points and plot those points and draw a line. So in other words, I can pick some values for y. x is always negative 3, so I'd have negative 3 comma, I don't know, let's say negative 5. And then I could do negative 3 comma 0, and I could do negative 3 comma positive 5. No matter what I choose for y, doesn't matter what it is, it could be 1 billion, x would be negative 3. So you can go through and plot these points like that. So we have negative 3 comma negative 5. So negative 3, negative 5. That's right here. Let me use a different color. And then negative 3 comma 0. That's right here. And then negative 3 comma positive 5. So that's going to be right here. So you can see you're going straight up and down. right? This would be a vertical line. So the trick to this is I don't need to make any points. You just kind of do that at first to get your mind wrapped around what's going on. If you have x equals negative 3, you just find negative 3 on the x-axis, and you just create a vertical line. That's all you need to do. So I know that's not perfectly straight, but we'll just pretend that it is. And we'll put our arrows at each end. And it's just that easy. And remember, no matter what the value of y is, let's say y is 7, x would be negative 3. So this would be a point on that line. And I know the line is kind of a little crooked, so it doesn't hit there, but that's where it should be. Or let's say y was negative 6. Well, x is negative 3. So it's right there. So if I gave you another one, let's say I gave you the problem x is equal to positive 6. Well, you just find 6 on the x-axis, and you draw a vertical line. That's all you need to do. Okay, and again, I know that's not straight, but do the best that I can. So put my arrows at each end, and that's x equals 6. So no matter what the value is for y, x will be 6. So it's just a vertical line. Now, mathematically, you might be asking, how is this a linear equation in two variables? Well, let's go back to the definition I gave you when we first started talking about it. I said that we had ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c were real numbers, and a and b were not both 0. So a and b are not both 0, but one of them could be. So if I have 1x plus 0y equals some number, let's say negative 3, for example, when I simplify this, I end up with 1x, or just x, 
plus, 0 times y is 0, so I can just kind of get rid of that. So it will really be x just equals negative 3. So this is a way to write it as a linear equation in two variables. And it's also a way to check your ordered pairs, right, to mathematically show that it makes sense. If I have the ordered pair, negative 3 comma 5, well, I can plug it into this equation, and it would be true. So I plug in a negative 3 for x, and I plug in a 5 for y. 1 times negative 3 plus 0 times 5 should be equal to negative 3. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 0 times 5 is 0. So this would be negative 3 equals negative 3. So that checks out. And you could do that as long as x is negative 3. You could do that with any value of y because you're multiplying it by 0. So it's just going to drop out. So the next concept is a horizontal line. And this is very, very similar to what we just looked at. This type of equation has a fixed value for y no matter what the value is for x. So this type of line is going to be parallel to the x-axis. So let's look at y equals negative 2 to start. And again, you could go through and make some points, but you don't need to. If y equals negative 2, find negative 2 on the y-axis. It's right there. So no matter what the value is for x, let's say the value is 2 for x, y is negative 2. Say the value is 6 for x, y is negative 2. Say the value is 10 for x, y is negative 2. Say the value is negative 4 for x, y is negative 2. So it's just a horizontal line. You just find negative 2 and draw a horizontal line. Okay. All right. So that would be y equals negative 2. y equals negative 2. Now, if I said y equals 5, I would just find 5 on the y-axis, draw a horizontal line. If I said y equals 9, find 9 on the y-axis, draw a horizontal line. So these types of problems are very, very easy. And again, mathematically, we can write it as 0x plus 1y equals, in that case it would be negative 2. This is the same thing as y equals negative 2. But we wrote it with two variables, so we can say it's a linear equation in two variables. And if I give you an ordered pair, like let's say negative 6 comma negative 2, it's going to work. Plug in negative 6 for x, 0 times negative 6 is 0, so I'm just left with 1 times y. Plug in a negative 2 for y, I get negative 2 equals negative 2. And so when you see an equation in this format, y equals some number. Find that number on the y-axis and draw a horizontal line.